In the last few decades, science has looked beyond sugar's traditional uses and has been perfecting a far more potent use of this product. Catching the industrialized world off guard, this new technology hasn't been fully utilized by the US, Japan, or Europe. It springs from a nation where the per capita income is just $2,700 per year. By taking bold and visionary steps, Brazil has vastly reduced its dependency on oil and is on the verge of becoming energy self-sufficient. It's a big commitment towards the renewable energy sourcing and the future of our environment. That's the lesson. Brazil converts sugar into the alternative motor fuel, ethanol, which is 90% alcohol. As the world leader in sugar production, Brazil grows sugar on 15 million acres, double the area of just 20 years ago. Farmers have to keep up with demand. Almost half of all new cars today run on mixtures that include some ethanol. In 1973, Brazil and other oil importing nations faced the shock of the first oil embargo declared by Middle East suppliers. Spurred by the crisis, Europe and the United States inched toward energy alternatives. But Brazil blazed full speed ahead. So many developments happened since 73 uh, to today. I think it was one of the most impressive uh, R&D programs uh, uh, with practical results ever done by humankind. Created in 1909, the Model T Ford became the motivation for one of the great technological advances. The idea of using ethanol for motor fuel has existed since the early 1900s. had to be found to build them faster. Henry Ford originally planned to run his Model T on biofuels before turning to cheap and plentiful gasoline. But Ford sensed that ethanol's time would come, proclaiming it the fuel of the future. For Brazil, that prediction became reality. We believe for the 21st century that the petroleum model used on the 20th century has to change. Brazil has been growing sugarcane since shortly after the Portuguese arrived in 1503. So it has vast experience. To produce energy-rich ethanol, which Brazilians simply call alcohol, stalks are processed and purified like any other sugar cane. But after the sucrose juice has been extracted, the factory line sends it in two different directions. One continues in the traditional path, ultimately winding up as sugar crystals. But in the second path, the liquid ferments for six hours. The juice goes to the fermentation tanks. Then we throw more or less 70% juice and the other 30% yeast. This yeast will transform the sucrose from the juice into ethanol. The ethanol process is just a slight variation of the rum process. It's based on fermentation and distillation. This single factory can process 900,000 liters of ethanol each day, enough to fill up 20,000 car tanks. Brazil produces 35% of the world's ethanol, five times more than the United States. In the U.S., ethanol blends account for 30% of all motor fuels. While most U.S. ethanol is made from corn, Brazil's output is entirely sugar-based. In conjunction with automakers, Brazil has also encouraged the development of flex-fuel cars. Vehicles able to run on ethanol, gasoline, or any mixture of the two. As fuel is burned in a flex-fuel engine, an oxygen sensor measures oxygen content, which reveals the composition of the fuel. For each fuel mixture, there are specific injector and spark settings to maximize performance. Once the sensor recognizes that a new fuel is coming in, the controller of the engine, which is a small computer, will process all the information to the engine and will regulate the engine to the new mixture that is coming in. General Motors' 1.8-liter engine control module 
adjusts to the fuel mixture in real time with a maximum output of 109 horsepower on straight ethanol and 105 horsepower on gasoline. The engine is the heart of GM's Corsa Flex Power Subcompact, the company's flagship vehicle in this category. It's one of many flex fuel cars available for Brazilian drivers. Numerous car manufacturers have been setting up plants here, eager to build the next generation of vehicles, all because of the energy contained in sugar. Brazilian motorists embracing this technology have no problem finding alcohol to fill their tanks. In Brazil, we have the distribution. We have alcohol in every gas station by a law from the 80s that every gas station in Brazil should have all the fuels, gasoline, alcohol, and diesel. As for the environmental impact, car engines pollute whether they run on gas or ethanol. With gasoline, the main culprits are carbon monoxide and dioxide. With ethanol, it's nitrogen oxide. An environmental benefit comes from the fact that producing biofuels is a far cleaner procedure than refining oil. Also, a car burning 100% sugar-derived ethanol generates the same amount of carbon dioxide as would have been released by the sugar plants as they decayed. Thus, to environmentalists, the process is considered carbon neutral. Even the major oil companies have adapted to the new realities of the Brazilian energy market. We are happy to see big names like the oil companies jumping into the program and helping because uh, uh, we need their logistics, we need their distribution force. In recent years, the average cost of filling up at a Sao Paulo gas station has dropped from 40 US dollars for a tank of gasoline to less than half of that for a tank of ethanol. I have a tax for living and I fill the tank every other day. And I can fill it with gasoline or alcohol, but I prefer to fill it with alcohol because it costs the half of the price and it's cheaper to me. Ethanol, which has a higher boiling point than motor fuel, becomes less combustible in cold weather. So most flex fuel cars have added a small extra tank to hold just gasoline. Drivers can thus use gasoline to get going on chilly mornings and afterwards run on ethanol once the engine is warmed up. Western countries are now taking a fresh look at ethanol, seeking their share of the Brazilian energy miracle. The U.S. Congress's 2005 energy bill mandates doubling ethanol production by 2112. But this is a far cry from Brazil's track record. They've gone from roughly an 80% dependency on foreign oil to roughly a 10 to 15% dependency. We think the use of sugar in the future is obviously going to be an important component of renewable fuels uh, for the United States. Flex fuel is here to stay. Our cars from now on, every new development is flex. We see that 100% uh, of our production will be flex cars and it's growing very fast. And I believe in the United States with the highest education standard in the population, it will be even easier than here. Brazil has clearly shown the world how the sugar industry can make a positive contribution to a nation's energy needs.